Well, our next major project looks like it'll be the basement stairs from the basement up to the main floor. And to be quite honest, I've been putting it off because I'm intimidated by the prospect of building them. The um, building code regulations, there's a lot of them, and I, the actual calculations for the stairs can be quite tricky. So um, I've been a little reluctant to tackle the job. Um, not only that, the building itself is fairly narrow. It's uh, less than uh, 12 feet, 11 something from the wall to the uh, midpoint of the cabin. And to fit a whole flight of stairs in there is going to be uh, um, challenging uh, to be sure. There's certainly no room for air. Um, but they've got to be done and uh, there's no time like the present. So onward and upward, uh, we're going to begin the uh, basement stairs. Well, I'm down the basement now, and I've just done uh, a lot of measurements of the dimensions for the stairs. And it's clear that a full flight of stairs will not fit between the main beam and the cement wall. So I'm going to have to build a uh, landing and then run two stairs off the landing at about 90 degrees in order for everything to fit. And the landing, I'll just make a short, strong box, uh, probably out of two by fours that I have here. This will be about 37 inches wide and about 55 inches long. First layer you see with the studs. Now I've put a rim joist over there, a rim joist here, and I'm laying two by six floor joists across this way. I need one sheet of 5 8 inch uh, plywood, uh, so they're not going to deliver that. So I have to hook up the old trailer, uh, which has got to be 50 years old. It was my dad's, and uh, it still seems to be working fine. The tires are good, so we're on our way in to uh, pick up a single sheet. All loaded and ready to go. Normally I strap them down, but I'm going a short distance, so I think just laying it out that way so the wind blows over top of it should be fine. Famous last words. So I'm working on the uh, calculations for the rise and the run of the stringers and uh, I've been playing around with it for a bit. So I'm going to build these stairs with a unit rise of 7 and 11 sixteenths and a unit run of 9 inches. Set it on the edge of the board. And there's a 9 inch run. Seven and eleven sixteen inch rise. I'm about to try and cut a stringer out of this uh, two by twelve. 
I've uh, marked it with the uh, runs and the rises. I'm a little nervous about it. I just set this first stringer in place and it looks like it's going to be close enough. So I thought I'd just do a dry run and put the three stringers up and see if they're reasonably close. They're in the ballpark and we'll be able to make it work. Fingers crossed anyway. Well, late getting started today. Um, what is it? It's almost quarter after 11 in the morning and uh, I had to go into town to get some uh, hangers to hang the stringers uh, to the uh, to attach them to the the main beam these are adjustable hangers for the stringers this one will go on the middle and these two will go on the two sides essentially what's going to hold the stringer to the uh, main beam and this joist. Man of steel. Okay, I'm an idiot. That isn't how they go. They don't go like that because what, what would you screw or nail this to? I think this is supposed to go on the wall first. The stringer sits inside this and then you bend it around the stringer and put the screws in the bottom. I'm going to go back to Timber Mart and buy two more of those. <laughs> Idiot. Okay, this is our MO. Do it, realize it's wrong, take it apart, and then do it right. We're very good at disassembling. So it's 12.30, I find myself back in the car, heading back into town to get the right uh, hangers for the stringers. Uh, this has got to be the most unproductive day so far of the summer. Uh, hopefully, I get the right ones this time, get back and get to work and get something done, something accomplished for the day. Oh, went better than I thought. So now the uh, stringers are secured at the top against the uh, main beam. And they're also secured down here at the bottom. Uh, to the landing. So by code, each riser has to have a uh, backing on it. They can't be open backed. That's a safety feature, so you can't slip and get your leg caught under there. So I got a um, piece of half inch uh, spruce plywood and I've been cutting strips off of it. So that's that completed. We've got 10 backs for the risers all in place. It's a little dark down here, so it's hard to show you detail, but I'm starting the treads and the building code specs for the treads are that they have to be at least 36 inches wide. And these are 38 or just under 38. And they have to be one inch thick minimum or 25 millimeters thick minimum. Two full boards 
uh, makes the uh, tread way too wide. Uh, the nosing would be way out here. So I have to cut something off the backboard. It's about an inch and an eighth. And I'm about to finish off the, uh, the last uh, step. I'm putting in the uh, treads right here. Now the treads are supposed to be, have a depth of 10 inches. And that does. And they're supposed to have a nosing of one inch. And that does. So the tread is good. Uh, that works out fine. Now the rise on the other hand, all the way up the stairs has been about seven and three quarters. And this one is only about seven and a half. Now, you were supposed to, and I did, uh, factor in what your finished floor is going to add to the step. So if we took a finished floor something like this and added it there, it would bring it very close to the seven and three quarters. Now we can walk on them. One of our really bad habits is we tend to get working on projects, get them almost done, and then we move on to something else. We've got so many projects around here that are 90, 95% done, and at some point we got to go back. So today, Anna, when I was uh, working on the stairs, she decided to hit the doors. Now the doors, we got them all in, but we didn't finish all the uh, all the shims. So she shimmed it today on both sides, and <clears throat> now it seems like it's secure and ready to go. So she's going to foam it. You going to foam it? I'm going to foam it. She's going to foam it, and uh, <clears throat> we thought if we spray the foam in here, it's firing out the other side. That's it. So, this is what she's done. She's got some band-aids here and some old strips of wood. This is, this is real construction 101. Um, <laughs> and she's got these strips around there. So now, she's about to uh, foam it. pretty good well the cardboard is served as well but it's time to go so I think we'll remove the cardboard and uh, put up a, at least a header that uh, blocks it a little better than that I didn't have any good boards uh, in my pile of lumber there, but I did find a 2x6 I could shave down. And uh, it's, I would like to put a better piece of wood in there, but hopefully this fits and it'll be better than the cardboard and maybe it'll get replaced someday. We'll see. Pretty close. We'd like to start using our front door, but it uh, needs some work before we can actually put it into service. Uh, back when it required a frame to be built, I built it with this frame and it worked out okay. The door is hanging pretty nicely, 
but it isn't wide enough. It doesn't come out far enough. It should go past the framing of the house. So I need to build that out. I started off, I've put some shims in here and it brought them out so that I can attach something to them to bring this framing out. Now believe it or not, Lowe's sold something called jam extensions. I guess more people than me have this problem. So here's a piece of that jam extension. And I think it has a pattern on it. And I think it goes in like this. Just like that. Now it has a pattern. And I don't know if that pattern has a function or if that's just a pattern for aesthetic reasons. But since I can't figure out the function, that's the way I'm putting it on. Kind of looks like it should be on the inside, but I don't care. I couldn't figure it out, so we're going to put it on this way. Jam extensions. The flight of stairs now is complete down to the landing, but the landing is uh, about 15 and a half inches off the ground. So I need one step to get up to the landing. So I'm going to just make a little box step to go right here. I'm going to use two by eights for the box step. Uh, the height of a two by eight is actually about seven and a quarter inches. And if I take that height and put a half inch or five eighths inch piece of plywood on top of it I've got the right height for the box step so I've cut two pieces and two end pieces and there's my box Here's the box step in place. I'll just attach it to the landing right there and that should work. <clears throat> we've just got a small window of time here so Anna and I thought we'd throw the boat in the water and just check a few things out on the lake that we haven't had a chance to to do yet this summer. So we'll just uh, load it up. First of all of course it has to be de-spidered uh, for Anna, so uh, I guess that's my job. That's a brisk wind, eh? It 
Um, because it's been so dry for so long, even though it rained a bit yesterday, yeah. the water is probably going to be a little low going through this cut in the rocks. Uh, let's go through it. If we get hung up, you can just jump out and... Oh, it's nice and deep through there actually. That's quite the octopus, eh? This south side down here has got a fair amount of people on it. There's another trailer. Oh yeah. Now that side doesn't have many cottages at all. The water looks nice here. Yes. Here's the new bridge. How's the depth up there? Look good? Uh, yeah. yeah. I think there's just weeds here. Yeah. Okay, well, wow. let's go up to the rapids and then turn around. Yeah, okay. We we don't want to go through it today. No. That's not the dangerous one though. Oh, did we go by this? Yeah, we, we waded through this one the last time we were here. Oh, really? no. And then a little further down is the uh, ledge, the drop off. So are we going to go back? Yeah, let's spin around. You do a cross bell. If a little more water, and we'd be able to shoot that, that V looks pretty good. Okay. Just straight away up. Okay, we better get a run at this or we're not getting through it. Okay. Keep going, we're gonna make it. You got a broken seat, a broken paddle. What a trooper, oh. So the canoe had been sitting outside for the spring and the early part of the summer and this is our first time in it and the seat broke. The bow seat broke right here. The gunnel came apart. It's a little rotted. Now this canoe is, we figure, at least 40 years old. And then Anna got in and we realized that uh, her favorite paddle 
is missing half the handle. But she hung in there. We did the whole trip. Like I always do. Like you always do. Okay, so we gotta pull this canoe out now and find somebody that can repair gunnels. Because she's not seaworthy anymore.